Hi. Thanks so much for coming. My name is Steve Gravestock. I'm a senior programmer at the Toronto International Film Festival, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this screen to the festival and to this screening, the world premiere of Keith Berman's Giant Little Ones. To begin, we'd like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe and the Huron Wendat. We're grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. As part of TIF's commitment, as part of TIF's commitment to engaging youth in the festival's programming, our TIF Next Wave Committee selected this film for the next generation of movie lovers. The TIF Next Wave Committee is supported by the Slate Family Foundation, sorry, Slate Family Foundation Learning Fund. This film is eligible for the Canada Goose Award for Best Canadian Feature Film, the Girls People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote, and we'd like to thank Mongrel Media, United Talent Agency, and Celluloid Dreams for providing us with the movie this afternoon. Um, it's, I, it's, I'm really proud to be up here and introduce this film. It's really one of the most affecting films about adolescence and sexuality I've ever seen. It captures both that sense of total freedom and possibility that characterizes uh, being a teenager and also the, the kind of social pressure uh, you're under to sort of decide your life. Uh, it's rare to see that in any work of art and certainly a movie. Uh, it's propelled by some sophisticated direction by Keith Berman, who you remember from Flower and Garnet a couple years ago. Sensational debut and a truly brilliant cast featuring veterans like Kyle MacLachlan, Maria Bello, and Peter Outerbridge, and a great young cast led by Josh Wiggins, including Darren Mann and Taylor Hickson. Please join me in welcoming the director, Keith Berman. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight in this uh, amazing time and place. Thank you so much, uh, Steve, and all of TIFF for hosting us and bringing us to the film. It's truly an honor to be here. And uh, it's truly an honor to be sharing it. It's an honor to make the film, to be supported to make the film. So thank you, everybody who was involved in that. So I want to bring out the um, cast, the lead cast. Um, why don't you guys all just come out? And Josh Wiggins, Taylor Hickson, Maria Bello, Darren Mann, Kyle McLaughlin, and our amazing producer, Alison Black. So we're going to leave, and we're going to come back after and do a Q&A, and I hope you enjoy the film. Stick around, we'll be back. Once again, please welcome back Josh Wiggins, T Taylor Hickson, Darren Mann, Kyle McLaughlin, Maria Bello, producer Allison Black, director Keith Berman. We have some other guests. Too? Yeah, we're going to bring out some of the um, the crew, some of the heads of department. Oh, so why don't you guys all just mosey out? This is Michael Brook. He did the music. Uh, <laughs> Sandy Pereira is our editor. Marissa Schwartz is our costume designer. Zosha McKenzie is our art uh, produ production designer. Guy Godfrey, director of photography. Oh, this is some of our other cast. I'm going to start at the end here. Carson McCormick, Evan Marsh, Haley Kittle, Neve Wilson. Wilson, I knew that, and Kiana Madeira. I was really scared I was going to screw that up. Anyways, well, thanks, everybody. This is the people who made this film. Does anyone maybe have a question? Or question was, how did the film get started? 
Okay, the quick answer is, I was talking to a friend of mine about five years ago. Uh, if you may recall, there was uh, about four kids who committed suicide who were gay or thought to be gay and they were harassed at school. And uh, it was just before the It Gets Better movement. And we were just talking about this horrible situation. And he suggested we make a movie about it, and I didn't feel like I wanted to make a movie about uh, some young person who kills himself. But uh, that night I went, had, a, had a dream, and I, in this dream I heard a voice, a young man uh, talking to his mother in the kitchen. And um, the next morning I wrote that down, and it, it just kept coming, and I kept writing. And after a while I realized that there was a film that was trying to emerge. Uh, and then I just you know, kept making some notes, and then I realized it was a worthwhile thing to do. At that point in my life, I wasn't sure I'd ever make another film, because I just, I wasn't feeling compelled to, but then I was now suddenly feeling there was something meaningful to do, so I kept writing and met up with Alison Black a little not long after that, and um, we decided we would make the film together, and we talked about it, and envisioned the kind of film we wanted to make, and we started, and did it. Next, just wait. Anybody in the balcony got a question? No? Anybody down here? No questions, well, no questions at all. Okay. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. In the hat. The lady said it was quite brilliantly done, and uh, uh, she could show it to anybody in her class, and uh, she's a high school teacher. Uh, any, was there a, uh, any question? That was great, though. How Not, dare you? Yes. <laughs> right there. Uh, lady said, uh, uh, well, she was particularly impressed with the young cast. They were embodied teenagers really well, and she wanted to know why, why you chose to shoot it in Sault Ste. Marie. Well, when we were developing the film and writing the film, um, one thing I knew I really wanted to have was I wanted to have a lot of uh, life and vitality and a lot of greenery and a lot of sense of sort of wonder and, and beauty of the world and life and energy. So, uh, a, a, you know, Sault Ste. Marie has all these amazing tree-lined streets, and it was a really important part of the film. Um, and the other part of the film is it just is, a, you know, they offer um, incentives to, to shoot up there. <laughs> Not for the right. Now we're getting to the meat of it. <laughs> no, really, I wanted the lots of greenery. Um, so I got, we got both. Um, so, you know, it's a very supportive program, and it, it's, it's fantastic. You know, it really helps films get made. So I have a lot of gratitude to those people. You guys have shot a lot of films in Sault Ste. Marie, though, Do you right, Alison? Alison? Yeah. Oh, great. Leave these microphones just appear. Yeah, this is my third film in Sault Ste. Marie, actually. If anyone here is from Sault Ste. Marie, What's the name shout of the out. Woo! <laughs> I'm blanking on the cheese shop. Maria and I this are known what's as... What's the great cheese shop in Sault Ste. Marie? There's a great cheese shop, guys, if you want to go. <laughs> and amazing uh, um, extras. But Sault Ste. Marie is amazing because it's such a welcoming community. But... You know, Keith and I also really wanted to do is make this film feel like um, people can really recognize a community or a city or small city. It's not necessarily, you know, the extraordinary metropolis of Toronto where these things are going on. I just wanted people to feel like it was recognizable. And that was one of our choices for Sault Ste. Marie, for sure. Um, but we really wanted to make it feel like, one of the things that's most important to me is making a production feel like a family environment. And Sault Ste. Marie feels like family, but they also just roll out the carpet for us and just make everybody feel at home. And, um, and that makes a difference in what you see on screen. So, yeah, I think I really want to thank the financiers who helped incentivize that, but I just really want to, you know, say that's what it's about. Because if you see good energy on this screen, it's because of all the good energy here and how everyone felt when we were shooting it. So, thank you to everyone and to the city. Go ahead. Did 
gentleman said the film was fantastic, and, but he wanted to know what was the uh, biggest challenge or obstacle making the film. Hiding the bike, maybe. Hiding the bike, yeah. It's um, a lot of bike know, riding. I don't yeah. know. There's, there's so many uh, big challenges in making a film. It just takes such uh, an amount of faith and perseverance. Uh, you know, and to, you know, we spent years developing it, years working on getting the money. You know, and Allison worked so, so hard uh, to make well, that Well, hang on happen. a second. I just want to say, actually, we, spent, we did spend years developing the script because we really wanted to make it right so that we, you know, we tested it with high school students. We tested it on every age group and so many people just to make sure it was right. And then when it was right, it was actually very fast to get the money. So I actually don't, I want to just... Okay. Brother, I want to correct you there. <laughs> Producing is way easier than you Producing think. Way, yeah, she, it wasn't that hard. Because they um, responded to the script and, and the vision for right. it. So that's all I want to say. So I don't know. I, I can't say what the biggest challenge was. There's lots of big challenges. Um, but uh, there was a lot of um, support and a lot of um, you know, goodwill, I think, because people really thought it was meaningful and worthwhile making. There was... What's your question? <laughs> She's there had enough for so Taking over. Oh, okay, thanks. Good job. Uh, for the actors, and I really think this is a super complex uh, film, and it's actually all for that kind of role for other actors. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the most challenging part of making a film that is not a film? The question was for the actors, and what was the, uh, the uh, toughest scene you guys had to film? I think, uh, I think Darren will probably say the same thing, the, uh, the scene with me and him at the, at the gas station, because that's really kind of the, the culmination of all the of all the problems they've encountered and it's so heartbreaking because it's you see at the beginning how close they are and how much fun they have together and then when it comes to that point and it just it just makes it hurt that much more physically and emotionally <laughs> uh, so that was a really powerful scene and really powerful to to be able to, to portray that that dynamic but I mean there's there's so many I mean, yeah I mean uh, that that scene at the gas station was definitely the most Challenging is one word to say, but it was also, um, thanks to Keith's great writing, it was also a lot of fun to play because there was so much there for me to work with and layers between what I'm dealing with with my friends and where I stand within my social circle, but also I love him so much. So it was challenging, but it was also really fun to shoot as well. So, yeah. Probably yeah. the swimming was the hardest for me. <laughs> Actually. Um, I, I, um, I found the scene where we were at the gate the hardest because I, I, have, I found this major connection to Natasha as we were going along and Keith and I uncovered some stuff that I had buried in my own personal teen years that sort of came up and um, I, I came to terms and learned to understand and, and cope with some damage that I had buried. But um, it, was, it was also beautiful at the same time. Go ahead. I wanted to say The lady is proud to be a Canadian after this film <laughs> and uh, was very impressed with the authenticity of the film and she wanted to know if you guys had any, was there a connection that, with, the, with other people or the characters that made it easier for you, a personal connection? Uh, I mean, I've never experienced, you know, something of, of that magnitude with, with Baus, but I mean, I think everyone growing up has experienced some sort of, of homophobia or or teasing about you know someone that that might be gay at school, and I think that, that that's what this film is is so great at, is that it can reach so many people, and uh, it just has so much to say about about not only that but just navigating high school, you know, because I mean that's hard enough in and of itself without you know all that business going on. But um, I actually think the film has so many things to say about. 
the fluidity of, you know, of sexuality and, and love and, and how abstract it can be. And I think anyone anywhere can kind of relate to that and find that, you know, somewhere in themselves. I, I, um, I know we talked a lot about the, the younger characters, but I thought that the, the, the uh, father and mother were also exceptional. Yes. Uh, uh, and it, it, uh, it felt very real to me, too. Do you guys want to talk about how you approach the role? Is that uh, the, the speech at the end was particularly, I think, uh, compelling that Kyle gave? Thanks. Thank you. Um, well, I was, I was blessed with some pretty amazing writing um, and also working with an extraordinarily talented actor. Um, and so much of what we do is, a, is really based on and actually um, uh, imperative that you have someone that you're working with that is um, able to look you in the eyes and give you the, the feelings and sensations that you need uh, to do what you need to do. And uh, I just had to look at Josh and uh, the reality was there and it, uh, everything just kind of tumbled out. So, there you go. Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, son. <laughs> so. Marie, do you want to talk about how you approach the role? Uh, beautiful. And I'll agree with everything that you've said there. But I also want to say, I'm the mother of a 17-year-old and I was just, um, just saying to you backstage, I say to my son sometimes, Jack, I get it when we're having an issue. I know you've never been a teenager before, but I've never been the parent of a teenager. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Let's figure out what to do here. <laughs> so, so I felt like that's the best tack that I can take. Um, and so I, I brought that to the mother in the film, that sensibility of like, all right, I certainly didn't have it all figured out because none of us do. And, but to see your... All of you, your real bravery to be present and connected and to um, feel free. My, kids my age, in, your, in my generation, in our generation, would not be standing up here so freely talking about the subject matter. And I applaud you all for doing this and for your whole generation. Thank you. In the front there. Was there a particular scene or line that really spoke to you guys when you were first reading the script or just in general? Anybody? Uh, I mean, one of Kyle's lines that I think resonated with me, both as Frankie and as a watcher, is it sounds like you just had a sexual experience with somebody that you really loved. And it was... Yeah. And at the time, you know, Frankie's just kind of blown away by the simplicity of it all, you know? And I think it just delivers it in such, such an efficient and such a, yeah, nuanced way that is, is really impressive. I, I was hoping someone would pick one of Mouse's lines. Uh, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Where did the... Uh... <laughs> can, we, can we have a, a breakdown of the uh, development of the... Uh, um, Accoutrements? Uh, how, did, how did that sort of come about? Uh, I want to give it to him. <laughs> Don't put it in your pants. Um, sorry, could you repeat that? Really? <laughs> uh, I, I just want to know how the, uh, the sock thing developed and um, how that, uh, so where it came from or where. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, my mom was saying this to Keith earlier, but like when I first auditioned for it, that, um, that scene between me and Frankie on the porch was what I auditioned with. Um, and obviously in it, she's like, yeah, I'm wearing a sock cock. It's a tube sock wrecked in elastics. Um, and my mom kind of teased me mercilessly for it. Um, uh, just cause like, 
I was clearly like uncomfortable channeling this like character that I didn't really have any like firsthand experience with. And she tried to like kind of normalize it for me so that I could be able to like be this character. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was it was kind of like an on running like point of like a serious joke on set because we're all going like. How's that feel? Is that comfortable? You feel comfortable? <laughs> um, but it was definitely, uh, it was an inexperience, um, and it was kind of felt like a lot of responsibility to, to like, portray Mouse as, as like a real human being, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, this will have to be the last one, the gentleman there. Was there a scene that you cut that you really didn't want to lose? Uh, whoever wants to answer that from the film? Sorry, what was the question? The question was, was there any uh, scene that you regret uh, leaving out of the film? Oh. Correct? No, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I think, I mean, we, we definitely, it's an emotional process when you lose any part of a scene or a full scene. I know we've definitely lost parts of scenes and really sort of tried to make dialogue concise and, and, and just to keep the pace going and keep the scene to its core. But I don't think that I've, mi like when I was watching it today, I definitely didn't miss anything. I felt like, like we got what we wanted to get and anything that was left on the cutting room floor. That's okay. It's okay to shoot it. Sometimes we need that the actors to absorb all that and to and for the scene to have that. But then when we cut it out, it's still there. It's like the memory of it is still there, but but we've extracted its core. So I think that that still remains. So I I have no regrets. Hopefully you don't, Keith. <laughs> it's good to have no regrets. I'm afraid we do have to wrap it up. But uh, the film.